resins releasing rifts, screens succumbing to scraping, and scrapers self skewering. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 158. Let's get into it. First off, an update from last week where we looked at Crazy Photon's peanut butter blob of doom failure with his Mark IV. Uh, it turns out that was Hatchbox Wood PLA, and as you can see here in this photo, we have successful sock removal. As weird as this may sound, this further validates why you should have a sock on your printer. If this was on the outside of the sock rather than the inside of the sock, this would not be a problem and would have just fallen right off of your printer. But with just a little bit of heat applied, they were able to remove the stock sock for this machine. And as far as I can tell, it's completely good to be reused again. Obviously, there's no guarantee in instances like this, but hey, I'm going to call a win a win. This socks ain't cheap. And I'm not certain if there's third party options out there yet for it. So I'm going to assume there aren't. So when you can save them, hey. It's one less thing you got to spend money on. So, A plus for that. Good job, Crazy Photon. Speaking of crazy, my name's Crazy. Wait, no. My name's Grant, and this is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. So, if you are dealing with a particular printer problem where you're running into whatever problem it may be, resin, filament, or otherwise, you can reach out to us via all the social medias, although I really only check Twitter and YouTube, personally, use the hashtag printfix. We'll do what we can to help get your printers back to running properly, the way that we want them to be. This one, though, is technically not a failure of a printer, but more on a failure of settings. Drain. This is how much resin was in my giant arm print. Do I need to adjust some settings or something? Yes, yes. Uh, one, resin is toxic. Resin is toxic. Resin is toxic. Resin is toxic. Wear some effing gloves, please. Please, 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 please. Wear some gloves. Resin is a nasty chemical. It is a contact allergen to humans. So while you might not initially be allergic to it, over time and exposure, you will be. In fact, I know people who can't even be in the same room as resin printers because the fumes alone cause them to have their throat start to swell and just have basic anaphylaxis level of symptoms with just the fumes from resin printing. So please be careful. Second, you need drain holes. We talked about this a while back when we took a look at UV tools, which I still believe is the cheat code to resin 3D printing. Cart that video if you want to take a look at it. It's probably due for a revisit. Let me know if you guys want to see, because I know we've had a lot of new people join the channel since then. But UV tools will identify all of these problems for you, including areas that aren't supported, areas that could be air bubbles, and areas that will have trapped resin. It can drill those holes for you digitally before you get to this point. But you're already at this point, so let's go through the things that you can do. One is actually two, drain holes. You need two of them. Traditionally, you want one on the top and on the bottom so that as resin comes out, air goes in. So you don't end up with a vacuum and the resin not being able to escape. That's a problem. A small drill bit or two gets you a couple of holes. We'll get that resin draining out. But then you still have the issue of the inside of this part having raw resin on it. You need to get light inside of it. And that's why in UV tools, we like to make a larger hole that we can just seal up with raw resin mixed with cornstarch later on and a UV laser because they're very cheap. And I don't know, they're, they're, they're fun to play with with cats, I guess. Uh, and they're very useful for that kind of thing. In fact, I keep it up by my resin printers when we need to do things like that to hide those holes. In programs like Lychee Slicer, you're able to just make the hole and have the little piece that would have been there printed as well so you can fit the plug in the hole. I I'm sorry, but there are multiple ways to kind of get through this. With the part that already has resin in it, you need to drill a hole large enough to put an LED inside of this part, a UV LED to be specific. And we get little three millimeter ones. We solder on solid core wire, not stranded. We want solid core so it doesn't bend or flex on us. 
and we attach it to a coin cell so we can just feed it up into the drain holes to cure the inside of these parts. You would want to do this before you've gone through the work and done the painting, but hey, hindsight is at least 2020 these days. Should I say it's 2024? I, I, I don't, I don't know. It seems like a worse joke than the one I just got done making. <laughs> but we also want to make sure that we're dealing with this liquid resin. I'm assuming that's water. I hope it's water, because if it's alcohol, we've got multiple other issues we got to deal with. So let's assume it's water. You need to put this either out in the sun or in a curing chamber and let all of that liquid resin harden up before you can safely dispose of it. Here in Florida, we use clear containers like that, a bit of cheesecloth on the top so no animals get stuck inside the bucket of doom. My God, it's dead! And we let all of the water, alcohol, whatever it is, evaporate, leaving us with only the nasty, now cured resin at the bottom, which we can chip out and dispose of properly. But if you don't go through that, you should be disposing it as chemical waste because it is toxic to waterways. Because remember, resin is toxic. This is gonna be a common theme throughout the rest of this episode. UV tools will help prevent this, so please go down the path of learning it, enjoying it, and realizing it literally updates pretty much every single day. And that is both Really cool and a little bit disturbing to me, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you use UV tools? Do you like it? Or do you just use some of the features inside of slicers like Lychee Slicer? Although I believe a lot of those come at the paid tiers, but eh, I think it's worth it. Love to know your thoughts. Let me know in those comments. Hey, while you're down there, leave a like and get subscribed to help this kind of stuff continue on. Over three years deep making these episodes for you guys literally every single Friday. So, hey, share it too. Why not? Help! I need somebody. I haven't been using this printer in Elegoo Saturn 1. Hey, I still have some OG Elegoo Saturns. For the past week, and I unknowingly had a hole in my resin tank and only found out when I went to change out the resin. But when I did a tank clean, it showed like this at first. I thought it was just a layer of resin that just cured. So I tried scraping it off, but it ended up looking like this. F's in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Your polarizer is screwed and you have started to literally scratch the screen this is toast it's over uh zero out of ten no notes it is time to replace the screen but as mr catlet we can see down here who's a mod in the resin printing subreddit which is super awesome says good news you can buy a new screen however the saturn one is not a new printer mine still work i don't i mean I like the brand new Saturn, but I don't want to pay for it. You feel me? Hi, Elegoo. Just saying. <laughs> and if we look, he listed an AliExpress link with the new screen. And at $97, free shipping, which ain't bad. But at $97, that new Saturn with the actual vat that tilts for 400 bucks. I don't know if I'd go through the effort. My time might be worth more than that is worth. And that kind of brings me to a specific business case. And I know you guys want me to talk more about the business of 3D printing professionally. So uh, take this as, as a little bit of a teaser. For affordable resin printers, don't fix them. Just buy new ones. Work with a local maker space. This is what we do. Or if you have local staff, give them the printers. We give the local maker space the printer and the part to fix it. And that's it. I don't even change FEP anymore. I just buy new that with the FEP pre-installed. It is more time than it is worth to me as a business to go through and change all of those screws, like the 40 friggin' screws that it is for an FEP, when for 40 to 50 bucks, I can just buy a new that. Somebody else can change it and get it for pennies on the dollar. I don't care. My time is worth more than anything else. And if you are trying to do 3D printing professionally, or really anything professionally for that matter, the one thing that we as normal civilians cannot get more of is time. Value your time high. And if it's a $50 thing to just replace it or an hour to sit down and do it, 
I would often argue that it makes more sense to just go ahead and replace it. Now, the only time that I might argue against replacing is if you have a lot of them and you've been storing all the bad ones and you just do like a one-time thing where you replace all the FEP, but you would still need to have spare vats in inventory to be able to change out. It's my personal opinion. When it comes to screens, it is not worth opening up the machines in my opinion. It is worth buying a new machine, letting this one go to a maker space, provide them with the parts. They don't have to spend any money, especially if they're non-profit and show them how to fix it. If you want to fix this yourself because you might have a limited budget, that is fine too. Just understand these can be a little bit finicky. They're not that difficult, but they can be a little bit finicky and you have to be careful not to scratch the polarized layer again. This is why they tell you not to use metal scrapers on the screens of the resin printers. Because if you do, you can scrape through the polarizer layer. And why also we recommend putting a screen protector down. Even if it is something as easy as like a transparency film. We like the Mach 5 industry screen protectors that you can get for various machines. They're not cheap, but they work. And often, if I don't have to do any custom work to it and it just fits, it has a lot more value to me, again, as a business than having to custom cut something or using like a wide roll of tape or something like that. But definitely adding a screen protector can be valuable. Do note, it will reduce the amount of UV that is passed through to the vat. So you might have to increase your exposure times a little bit. But if you run the cones of calibration, the, the latest one at least, you can figure out what your new times should be for your machine. Normally we see like an extra 10th to an extra quarter of a second it is regular, but test it for your machine just to be safe. Quite frankly, your environment, your temperature will often change your exposure more than just putting a screen protector on. So something to know. Is my Mono 4K cooked? Um, no, no, it looks raw to me. Let's take a look and see what we got. Ooh, well, your screen is cooked. Yep, yep. So we've got a broken screen. There is no, again, there's really no way to fix these. Well, I can't say there's no way. You might be able to fix this. You could have a loose ribbon cable. I do see some dots here, and I don't know if that's from the LEDs underneath or if those are actually like little holes in the polarizing layer. If that is just the camera hating UV light, as most cameras do, you might be able to reseat the LCD cable and you might get lucky. This can happen when you don't have your bed level properly and you let it go into the vat of resin and it can apply pressure and mess with that very thin flexible ribbon cable and potentially break some of those contacts. So that's what we see here. Have you ever seen videos of people like punching monitors or uh, maybe there was a desk pop or something like that where a monitor was injured in the process? This is often what you see where something was damaged electrically and then there's black going all the way through. Unfortunately, you will have to minimally look at reseating the cable, give it a shot. It's not gonna cost you anything to try, but until you get that done, your parts will not print properly. Technically, you can print around those areas if you wanted, but you're gonna end up with bricks similar to this for every single layer as the screen is not acting appropriately for those layers. So, uh attempt to fix it. It, it. it is it is the right move. The right move is to attempt to fix it. If not, new screen. But as I said previously, it's not always worth replacing the screen if you can get a new printer for a couple hundred dollars more. It has a lot more recent features associated with it that could make the quality of your printing experience that much better. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are regarding repair versus replace. I totally understand this issue of I don't want to add to landfills. I don't want to add to landfills. I don't want to make this disposable problem worse. And that's why I say donate them. Let them have a second life at a maker space where they can take the time and they could do the repairs where you might not be able to. But I know not everyone has that opportunity and they might just end up throwing them away. I am 100% against that. I do not believe that is ever the right case because these machines are very simple at the end of the day. At least the motherboard, the LED array, the lead screw, the rail, the stepper motor, and other random parts can minimally be repurposed for 
a nonprofit like a makerspace or a hackerspace that can put it into like their stock storage of stuff when somebody needs some parts for whatever project they happen to be working on. And hey, as a business, you get a tax write-off. So that's cool. How is it a write-off? They just write it off. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to warn you, this one is a little bit graphic. So if you do want to skip it, here's the timestamp to skip to. Uh, there's no blood, but there is an injury that did occur. Well, there's no blood visible, I should say. Please be careful and patient, new starters or print vets. If something is stuck, frustrating you, etc., please put it aside and chill. Don't grab a super sharp chisel and take your anger out on the model. Lucky to be alive, hit a main artery, surgery, and 48 hours later, I was stupid, don't be me. I too have very sharp scrapers that are also a little bit rusty because in for a penny, in for a pound. I have a couple of injuries myself of using scrapers. There's one over here, there's one over here, and then there's one down here. All three times where I've been scraping on a bill plate, the part comes off and boom, I go into my hand. I've obviously gotten lucky on this. I've never hit a main artery, but I tell you, man, those sharpened scrapers Woo! They go real deep and they hurt, especially if they're not clean. And remember, if you're using like a resin printer, because resin is toxic, remember how this was going to be a theme for this episode? You can absolutely now poison yourself with resin. Now, it's not going to unalive you, don't worry, but eh, you might want to call poison control if that happens. This individual got incredibly lucky. We can see they're in a fancy hospital gown. How are those socks, by the way? Those hospital socks are... But that is... That's a lot of swelling. Swelling is often characterized by trauma. Like, proper trauma. They are incredibly lucky to be alive. Please, please, please. Don't be like me. Don't be like this individual. Please. Especially if you live in the United States and don't have a small deductible for your insurance. Please don't do this. And if you're going to do this, wear a proper cutting glove and also like a leather welding glove or something. I need multiple levels of armor. You know, as they say, we got to 3D print our boys a new artery or they say this is better with some proper armor. 10 points to anyone that does work on resin parts in full gauntlets um absolute street cred that i do not have uh metal working is not one of my specialties although i would love to learn i think it'd be super cool to learn but please be careful with those scrapers right there they're sharpened from the fact that this one i've had for a while and she's rusty and crusty but manufacturers are providing scrapers like this inside of most 3d printers it is very very easy to hurt yourselves please don't do that if the print is not coming off the build plate take the build plate off the printer let it cool down if you need to cool it down further put it in the freezer put it in the fridge if it's cold outside and you live anywhere other than florida stick it in the snow who cares and if it's a glass build plate Break the glass. You, the glass is going to break anyway. Just break the freaking glass off of it. Or, I know, crazy idea. Put a new build plate on the printer and reprint the part. Your health is not worth this. Surgery and 48 hours in a hospital? Ain't nobody got time for this. Certainly not yours truly. And certainly not the names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher, who hopefully haven't had this happen to them, and I hope they never do, and I hope it never happens to you either. The, the, the money has nothing to do with whether or not I care if you get hurt. I don't want anybody to get hurt, please. And if you have done this before, please let me know in those comments and what you do now to mitigate those issues. But yeah, huge thank you to everyone who has supported us throughout these years and a uh, big middle finger to Spectrum because you're the reason I couldn't finish streaming the Mark III to Mark 3.5 build. I don't like you. You still have these problems and I'm upset about it. I've done everything that I can and I still don't have an answer. So if you know how to uh, deal with Spectrum or happen to be a higher up at Spectrum or Charter Communications, hit me up, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. I will do terrible things for symmetrical fiber. I I'm just saying. Anyways, that's all I have for you all today. Click the links below me to check out the rest of the Print Fix Friday videos. But stay safe out there. Please stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Keep your stick on the ice. And other things.
Have a good one. Help! I need somebody. Help! Why is that gonna be the f***ing outtake? Oh, no.